Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Tuesday, January 16th General Hospital Spoilers and Recap mention that it was a very eventful day in Port Charles. Dex Heller appears in Cyrus Renault's hospital room at the start of the show. With a needle in his hand, he is prepared to infuse Cyrus's IV. The scene changes to see Nina Reeves conversing with someone in a hospital hallway about how she liked to keep discussions short and sweet. Next, the camera switches to Sonny Corintos, who is hurriedly wondering where Cyrus's room is as he exits the elevator. Before Dex gives Cyrus an IV shot, Sonny reaches the room window and mouths the word stop. When Dex notices the instructions, he pauses, but not before Cyrus asks him what he is doing and holds his hand. As soon as Sonny walks into the room, he urges Dex to go and requests a brief conversation with Cyrus. Following Dex's departure, Cyrus informs Sonny that he has some good news. He has made the decision to accept responsibility for his previous deeds and to withdraw all accusations against the mob boss. In the event that the allegations are sustained and Cyrus is put on trial, he will retract his evidence and present it as though he provoked Sonny's beating. When Sonny asks him why he's acting in this way, he comes to the conclusion that someone has persuaded him to reconsider. Cyrus affirms this, but he won't say with whom he made the agreement to drop the accusations. Dex meets Nana when he is leaving Cyrus's room. When she asks him what Sonny is doing with Cyrus, he is unable to answer. During the talk, Nina expresses her guilt for the things she did to cause this circumstance and tells Dex that she would do anything for the man she loves. Dex informs her that Sonny will have to let Nina know what he's up to going forward because he is unable to do so. Later, when Dex has changed out of his fictitious uniform, Sonny tells him about the charges that were dismissed and the arrangement Cyrus made with someone to make the change. In the waiting room of the hospital, Nana catches Dex's eye while Sonny is attempting to determine who struck a deal with his enemy. He looks toward Nana and muses that he might know. Sonny approaches Nana as she is attempting to confirm plans over the phone with someone. She tells Sonny that she believes she should be the one to clean up the mess after he calls her out for striking a deal with Cyrus. After all, it was Sonny's discovery of her SEC secret that incited his wrath, leading to Cyrus being severely beaten by the mafia boss. At that time, Sonny makes it obvious to Nina that he wants her out of his life and business. Fans are given an inside look into their arrangement when Nina pays Cyrus one more visit. Cyrus observes that he can start to spread the good word now that it appears she has secured a time slot at the neighborhood station. It appears like Cyrus is launching a television ministry or something similar. Dex and Sonny leave the hospital in the meantime. Sonny praises Dex for obeying his commands as they ride the elevator. He can now say with absolute certainty that Dex is reliable. Dex then probes Sonny about his intentions for handling Cyrus. Sonny expresses his intention to make Cyrus so miserable that he will wish Dex had succeeded in killing him today. Jocelyn Jacks rushes into the hospital from the other side, where she sees Willow Corinthos working behind the desk. Willow responds that Adam Wright is still undergoing treatment in the ER when she inquires about him. As Adam lies on an ER bed, the scene cuts to Elizabeth Weber, Dr. Hamilton Finn, and another nurse battling to save his life. Finn tells the nurse that this is life or death and that they cannot wait that long even though she reminds him that he requires the chief of staff's approval before beginning any treatments. Liz tells the hesitating nurse to go ahead. Willow tells Carly what Joss is going through when she calls her to the hospital. When Carly shows up, she offers Jocelyn comfort while she struggles to deal with Adam's predicament. Carly attempts to convince her that it's not her fault, but she feels like it is. The good news is that Liz appears and informs Jocelyn that Adam's condition can be stabilized and that he will probably recover completely. Joss tries to talk Finn out of calling Adam's parents when he mentions that he would. Ultimately, 
Adam's desire to end his life stemmed from the constant pressure his parents put on him. The hospital administrative staff is obligated by law to designate them as next of kin. Carly believes that this circumstance may make Adam's parents realize how they have been treating their son and cause them to alter their conduct. Jocelyn, though, isn't so she sure. enters Adam's hospital room when Willow gives her the all-clear and promises to stay by his side until he wakes up. Put an end to Spencer Cassidine, the conversation between Ace Cassidine, their father Nicholas Cassidine, Adam Huss, and themselves about leaving town is still not clear. Spencer informs his father that because Ace and he have roots in Port Charles, they are unable to leave, because Nicholas's life depends on it. He is adamant that Ace be taken, at the very least. Spencer responds that Esme is a wonderful mother, yet Nick acknowledges that Esme will always remain Esme and poses a risk to Ace's security. If she hasn't already, he thinks the reason she came to Windermere is to try and retrieve her memories of her dark past. Spencer had a flashback of speaking with Esme in the police station. When she mentioned his affluent background, and called him Spence in the past. He tells his father that he believes Esme may be able to retrieve her memories. Nick asks Spencer if they should risk Ace's life for the bet because he has little faith in Esme. Both of them know that time is of the essence. So after a phone call in which Spencer finds out that Esme received a six-month probationary sentence rather than a jail sentence, they both agree to let Nicholas go on a ski trip with Ace. After packing up the diaper bag and giving Ace an emotional speech about how much he will always love and support him, Spence says goodbye to his father and his younger brother for the time being. Esmond and Trina Robinson get into a small argument over at the courthouse. Trina agrees with the judge's sentence even though she wishes Esmond could make up for her previous transgressions because breaking into Windermere does not warrant jail time. She also informs Esme that Spencer will be traveling with her to Paris for a semester, indicating that she is prepared to let go of their rivalry. Esme seems quite upset about Spencer leaving her in Ace. When Finn gets back to the hospital, he thanks Liz for standing by him with the nurse in the emergency room. He was reminded by saving Adam's life of the reasons he loves his job as a doctor and how much he would miss it if he lost it. Liz then lets him know that they are meeting tomorrow with a renowned physician who might give them the best chance of winning his malpractice action. In a scene change, Joss is by Adam's side as Trina enters the hospital hallway. Jocelyn is taken aback to see Adam in the hospital bed and is unsure of how to approach him when he awakens. The show's last scene features a solemn Spencer sitting in his living room, taking stock of the events that have just transpired. He dashes to the door after spotting one of Ace's toys, only to find Esme's sullen visage staring back at him when he opens it. What will Spencer tell Esme when she asks to see Ace? General Hospital spoilers suggest that she will probably be in a panic once she realizes what has transpired. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.